What's up, Fromies? Welcome back to First Rounds on Me, a podcast about dating, dating apps, relationships, and everything in between. Today's guest is Eden McCoy. Eden is an actress, and not one, not one and a half, but two-time Emmy nominee Whoa, I on ABC's know General Hospital. <laughs> Eden, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I'd have to say that you're probably our most famous so far, so I'm excited about this. Oh. I want to start with this question because... I do a lot of research on the guests, and I feel like uh -huh. the soap opera world, uh -huh. every time I saw an interview, it was all about your character, yeah. right? And I feel like, do you ever like, I feel like there's a lot of like blurred lines. Do you ever feel like, what is my real life versus what is the character's life? Because I feel like when I saw you on these interviews, it was always talking about like drama in the show as if yeah. it was like your personal drama. Um, For sure. It's funny because growing up on the show and like, developing with the character I've played, you come across a lot of similarities and actually like our writers have like written things from my real life into my character. Like one example would be they made her a volleyball player. Mm. They like, they had me go to like the college on general hospital was called like Southern coastal <laughs> instead of like USC, yeah. which, which I went to, which is the college that I went to. And, um, yeah, so that got a little like strange sometimes because I'm like saying things that I've said like in real life before. Um, and yeah, it's interesting to be on this podcast because it's about m me as me and not about Jocelyn, which is the character right. I play, um, which is nerve wracking, but exciting. It it's refreshing to talk about someone else. Good. Well, yeah, we're excited to have you. And yeah, that's that's I feel like the soap opera world is very much like. I don't know much about it, but they seem yeah. to be so invested in that world where they it's like are. a real life in itself kind of. They are because we're in their living rooms every day. Mm. So it's not like a normal primetime show when when it's on like Tuesday nights and you it, it, it's a completely different culture in yeah. itself, which was wild joining the show because I had never seen anything like that before. So it's always been like so it's such a tightly knit community. Yeah. Um. So it, 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 it's cool to be a part of, but it can be very <laughs> overwhelming because people like some people cannot believe I am not Jocelyn, right. which is also really funny. So I don't know anything about Jocelyn. So who, so Jocelyn is the character you play? My character. How yeah. long have you played Jocelyn and who is she on the show? Like what, what's her personality? Mm -hmm. So I've played her for seven years. Um, her character on the show isn't much different for me she's like a normal college girl normal college girl but very involved in like her her drama is the mob right now so i come from like a mob family and like okay. mob background so <laughs> it's a very weird like i have security at college situation <laughs> like character wise obviously um so yeah, it's 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 a lot of family drama, family drama, college drama, all kind of tied in at one. Yeah, and I feel like with that many episodes, they like have to pull from your life because like there's they're running out of storylines. It's like, could you do something crazy in your life so we could write about it? Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's why I feel like they would. Yeah, that we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. okay. Um. Uh. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um. But yeah, there's there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of drama. You have to like it's it's like almost ridiculous because you constantly have to be coming up with other things. I feel like that's how soap operas like get their reputation of being like so overly dramatic and stuff like that. But that's because you kind of have to be because the ball just has to keep rolling all yeah. the time. And do yes. all the characters t like you've been on for seven years, right? Yeah. So. Do all the characters stay on that long and kind of grow with the show or is, is there can. a lot of in and out? You can for sure. I mean, the show, we just celebrated 60 years on, Damn. which is the longest running show, um, which was really exciting and like awesome to be a part of. We have legacy characters that have been on that show and are still on that show for like 45 years. I'm not even kidding. Wow. wow. Um, yeah. Like I think the, the, the actress that plays my grandmother, I think it's like around like 45 years that's wild yeah it's wild to be a part of something that is like in history that has gone back so long yeah that's exciting that's fun yeah yeah and i do a lot of people around la recognize you 
like, oh, no. you're from General Hospital. No, 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 no. Um, I mean, it's happened like a couple times, I guess. Um, it just, it act, that's funny you say that because it just happened um, in like the valley, like two days ago. <laughs> I was at a restaurant and my waitress watched it and was like, you're such a good actress. And I was like, thank you. Cause I'm not used to people like knowing anything yeah. about that. Like our demographic is like the middle of the country and like much more prevalent on the East coast actually than here. Mm. So, which is awesome because I like it's, I live completely normally and like, I like kind of that, like no one knows that I like hang around. It's, yeah. it's nice, but it's cool when I like go on like little press tours for the show or fan events and I get to explore a different state and you could see the difference because then it will happen a lot more. But here I'm like, I'm very safe here. <laughs> I remember the only, the only recognition I have or memory of general hospital is whenever I would go to the dentist, which was like during school hours. Oh yeah. That's when, it, that's the only thing they played was general hospital or the other soap opera. So that's mm -hmm. the only time. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are the only times I've ever, watch a soap opera yeah my friends it happened a lot in uh when i was at sc actually um like it used to play in the nail southern salon coastal or southern no not oh, southern, southern california <laughs> yeah okay. my real okay. college okay. um it it would play in like this nail salon that everybody goes to at sc because they they if you went during the day like it's what played dentist i've gotten like gyms I've gotten, like my friends will like send me pictures. That happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Um, cool. Well, I want to shift into dating and you could talk okay. about your experience or your friend's experiences. Okay. So Joe and I are a little bit older than you. Not much. Just okay. a little bit. Just um, a tad. And we found, so we did some stuff at UCLA and USC and some mm -hmm. other colleges. And we found that uh, it seems like people are in college these days, like are into more of like hookup culture and they mm -hmm. don't really want to go on dates. Is that more your experience, like you and your friends, or or what is it like? Like, what are you guys looking for, like for apps or? <sighs> um, my college experience, I was in a. I've always been a serious relationship person, like pretty much my whole life. I have never been really a part of hookup culture. I find whoever I hook up with, I date, and then we're dating for a long time, um, and. And college was was the same in my experience. Like I was with someone throughout my entire college experience. I'm not with them anymore. But that kind of kept obviously prevented me from like fully immersing myself in that. Um, I would say, God, it's kind of 50 50. It depends who you ask, because I've had I have friends that were very much like down and in the hookup culture especially when you start college I feel like mm. that's almost like encouraged in a way to like go out and meet people and experience and just like you're in college now so you can like fuck whoever you want and like you know <laughs> it's just kind of there like that I feel like the shackles are that's off the narrative out. that I feel is pushed um so I would assume more people are into that than not mm. um but I do have friends that like met someone like kind of right off the bat and they were like steady with them for a while too. There's a good word. That's a good word from, I think like our What's parents' that? generation, going steady. Going steady. Yeah. yeah. We should bring that back. It's nice. Mm -hmm. So what about like the dating app culture itself, right? So him and yeah. I, when we were your age, mm -hmm. dating apps weren't like really a thing. I mm -hmm. think Tinder just came out, mm -hmm. but people didn't really use it. But your generation, you guys know a world you know, mm -hmm. as adults of, oh, dating apps are a normal thing. So do, how do you see your friends gravitate towards them or what they say about them? I think, I think it's just now starting to blossom more and more, um, at least in the way I've seen it, because up until like a year ago, dating apps weren't ever a part of my life nor really any of my close friends until probably like a year ago. And then I think we got more into it. College is interesting. I never really heard much about dating apps in, in college. College itself school, is a dating app. Yeah. Cause the whole college, college itself, is like, yeah. like people were so focused and present 
in, in their own community and like, you were meeting people all the time, constantly, and whether whether it's through Greek life or anything else. So I feel like that wasn't there as much, but I kind of had like a double life of, you know, I, I had all of my college friends and like my college circle. And then I had my non-school friends, which were like working, whatever, working LA actors or, or, you know, kind of more a part of the LA scene and not so much like the USC scene. And that was much more prevalent. Like, I feel like with like people that are more involved in social media or, or kind of that world, I feel like that's where it really excels yeah. versus like on a college, like campus. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of you sense. You know what I mean? And then plus, like, I think a lot of people will use Instagram or Snapchat as like a dating yeah. app in itself or like a hookup app yeah can... i think snapchat like ruled yeah <laughs> my college experience like i feel like that's ev- was everybody's like form of communication but other than that like i mean i i like probably first heard about like raya and like all those popular dating apps a couple years ago but they were never in my life yet until like recently i mean or i'm not one, on raya right which one now. your friends on which one? one? Which app or apps are your friends on? Because you said like in the past. Raya is kind of the only one that like I've heard about like consistently. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I, it makes sense. Because yeah. you're not you're not even 21 yet, are you? I'm not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. As you get into the early 20s. Yeah. The uh, dating app language will be thrown around a lot more. Yeah. 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 But I love this is going to sound like such a shameless plug, but I love your idea because it's <laughs> it's so much more original. Than and you anything. could be real. If you don't like the idea, the show and the app are separate. We like to be honest on the show, but that's amazing. Yeah. No, but that's that's everything, though, because I did Raya for a little bit. I don't I'm not on it right now, but um, nothing happens. Like literally nothing yeah. happens. I've heard that from everyone. And, and everybody says that. Yeah. So unless you're just curious to like see who's on it and, and I have like friends that are and like aren't actually looking for anything, but they're just on it to be on it. And hopefully whatever that means. John Mayer on there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, yeah. but yeah, like the, the way that you have assembled that Thank you. model is, is dope yeah and i was i was telling somebody the other day i think t- tinder mostly has become oh, right. i forgot about tinder well I, <laughs> like completely <laughs> yeah because my mind. well i think it validates my point is that tinder became like instagram right where it's not a dating app tinder just wants to keep you on there to like waste time whereas they're trying to be instagram but instagram already does that where they have all the tools and it's fun and yeah that's what it's made for yeah tinder doesn't give a shit if you date they don't give a shit if you connect they just want you to be on the app wasting yeah. time and i feel like a lot of the apps are like that now and we're trying to get people to actually date and off the app so yeah, yeah. um okay so i want to ask you about love letters of great men oh <gasps> yes because that seems <laughs> I don't know oh much God. about it. I don't know much about it. Number one. Number two, is it from Sex in the City or do they popularize it? So that's how I initially heard of it. And okay. I think, and I might be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think that they recreated it from the movie. Okay. You know what I mean? I think somebody like saw it from the movie. I think it was probably originally conceptualized for the Sex in the City movie. And then someone was like, we should do that. And then actually made it. Okay. Like collected poems. So, so what, is, you, what, yeah, what is this? Um, well, sorry. I don't know much about it. I did a little research. But. <laughs> I can't believe you just hit me with that right now. I got to do so my background This is yeah. from today. Yeah. So I posted, I, I went to like the park with some friends today and, and I, I was wasn't reading. at the park. He I was not at the park. To the park. <laughs> not at the park. Um, but I brought like a, a book called Great Love Letters from Great Men or whatever, what the title. What's the book about? Matter. It's just a collection of poems. Of like of great men of great men like Napoleon like Napoleon like like historical documents of like love letters throughout history. Oh. That's like did you start reading it? Yeah. Can you tell us about one of the poems? Yeah. The reason I bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason I bring it up is because I you know you're you're a little younger, so I wonder what yeah. like it, do what you, prompted like, me to read that. Well not, well, not even that. But are you into like that type of like romance? Like because uh, that's very like. I've read a couple of the letters, like on the okay. record find online, and it's like they're it's, weird reads, right? Very strange. Very, you almost have to like spend time niche. deciphering them, right? Yeah. So do you like 
because I was also going to ask like, what qualities you look for in a guy. Yeah. And then I want to see how those like may or may not intersect. I don't know. I honestly don't know how much they would intersect. I just, I don't know. Cause like very heavy on the romance and cheese. Like yeah. Very no, cheesy, it's very like, cheesy. Yeah. It's very, but I, I love that. Okay. I do love that. So you shit. do love that. If it was I do. like a, in, in real life or just in theory, <laughs> like, are you a hopeless romantic? I don't know. Probably like leaning more towards yes than no. But I just think there's something like so amazing about reading stuff that's so old. Mm. Um, and that was like more of the interest to me, like not so much like the cheesy writing, but just the fact that people were writing this stuff like so long ago and I found it really interesting because you know like you you learn about history and like great people of history and and like the impacts that they've had and whatever but to like see that they had actual feelings about people (laughs) is like so nuts in my head that I kind of just wanted to like pick people's brain apart and like read that um also i love sex in the city and like saw that book in the library and was like done so then i like that's the honest truth yeah. but but yeah i just thought it, there was something so interesting about how like great love has like been so consistent always um mm. but yeah like if someone wrote me like one of those poems i think that'd be a very different conversation because okay. <laughs> it's a different time now yeah it's yeah. just nice to do a little like transport back to the 1800s (laughs) now do you want a guy to be chivalrous now and like what like a first date with a guy how chivalrous do you want him to be versus how much is too much see this is where i this is a personal struggle of mine i find myself um attracted to men who have those kinds of qualities and are very protective and kind of you know, very, whatever this means now, but like very masculine, like very, you know, get what you want type people, if that makes any sense. Um, trying to be careful with with my adjectives. Um, and I get into relationships with people like that. And I think that those can be great qualities. I think being protective is an awesome quality and and it's something that I look for and I think is important. Um, but a lot of the time and most of the time, the other qualities come with that. And you're saying you, like the full yeah, toxicity like you get someone of a man. That's like v- ext- yeah. I've been with extremely jealous men, I, boys. I've been <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like all of that stuff can come with the good stuff about them. Um, so I kind of like have trouble there because I'll like like a guy who's kind of very claimy mm. in a way like I like that and then I don't like that when it's inconvenient and becomes a completely different situation yeah you that know? makes sense so yeah so what other qualities do you look for in somebody humor like my number one is humor that's my not what I look for but it's my number one like attraction like I think if someone's funny I'm gonna like them mm. like it's just gonna happen <laughs> yeah. And I think that humor is confidence. Like if you could, because sure. if you could tell a good joke and be funny, you have yeah. to have the confidence to even attempt to do it. Because if you, if you fail a joke, you know, it doesn't look so good. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not particularly funny, but I give <laughs> a lot of credit to people who can make women laugh. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I don't know. There's something so attractive about humor and like having a great sense of humor to me that I think that's my number one. Sure. It's my number one. Um, also, just also manners like Mm. now especially is like almost a rarity to find like I think especially when you're first starting to date someone or you go on a first date or whenever it is like paying attention to how they treat other people like whether it's a server or like whatever activity you may be doing um like treating everybody with respect and like saying thank you and looking people in the eye and like the, it sounds like the bar is in hell (laughs) right now, but it's true. Like I think, um, I also look for like the ability to like be very present and like in the moment. Sure. And it's it's funny you say that because, you know, we talk to a lot of people on the podcast and Mm -hmm. you know, some people who are doctors of dating and they say that the way a man treats somebody is actually the most attractive thing biologically that a woman looks for and Mm -hmm. yeah so it's funny that 
all the women kind of say the same thing without knowing that that's, you know, the number one thing they're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know who Taylor Rad is? I think that's her name. I was just listening to a podcast that she was on and she said that exact thing. Like the number one thing she looks for on a first date is how that guy is treating the waiter and, yeah. you know, what kind of questions he's asking and how he's responding to questions. And like, yeah. you could tell a lot in those first few encounters with somebody. Yeah. To be a good listener too is what? definitely a quality that should be there what? <laughs> that I look for. To be a good... <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, definitely, definitely. Oh God, um, blonde so moment. What uh, what do you think are the main uh, differentiating factors between boys and men? Since you since you kind of oh, made a little security, like being secure with yourself, and I think um, and I think that really it a lot of it just comes with time and with age and mm -hmm. like going through shit and figuring shit out because I've I think your security with yourself impacts the relationship like infinitely. Um, like with my previous relationship and multiple of my previous relationships, I think most of our problems stemmed for my partner at the times like insecurities. And I don't, I'm not secure in every way and I'm not saying that everybody should be or, and I, I think that's like almost impossible. Um, but I think insecurities and then you take them out on your partner when they like don't have anything to do with that and can't like help yeah. you mm -hmm. in any way, like solve that, then, then it's on yourself. You know but what now, I mean? Do you, do you date guys your age or, or older? Um, my last boyfriend was a couple years older than me. Um, other than that, it's pretty much been my age range, which is like my like number one mistake because mentally I'm very, very old, like, and always have been like, I have, I should never date in my age group again. Like, <laughs> and, and I, I don't well, intend I've to. I've noticed that with, cause you know, between you and Jonathan and, uh, who else we have, um, uh, Aramis. Aramis. Yeah. Aramis. Like you guys, like actors seem to be much more mature and have a lot yeah, more probably. world experience and you're around probably adults more. And you yeah. Probably like, I mean, I grew up an only child. Uh, I grew up working. Um, I was always more attached to adults. It was a weird kid. Like mm -hmm. it, it, like it wasn't ever Disney channel for me. It's like Napoleon's it was Napoleon's love letters. Yeah. It, it was Napoleon's love letters yeah. and like SNL and, not geo like yes. it was weird um just watching like entourage at eight years old like not <laughs> like you know you like it, fast, yeah. i grew up really fast i had a great childhood i still feel like i was totally a kid but not at the same time it was never like a big calling of mine to like hang with with younger people um so yeah that's a lesson that I've had to learn. That's like, okay, we, you, <laughs> you actually need to date older. Like my parents agree. Like everyone's like, we're done with the, <laughs> with the, with your age. How far apart are your parents? They're about the same. Okay. They're about the same, but they just know that like, I need like a man like yeah. at this point. And I, I don't think it's a myth that women mature a little quicker than, for sure than men. For sure. And I'm still waiting to mature myself. Well, so I was going to say like maybe one day <laughs> from, from a guy's point of view, right. And I want to, yeah. you know, judge everybody but i only started really figuring out started figuring out who i was like 29 30 31 yeah and now i'm 32 i'm getting a sense of like okay this is who i am yeah but in my 20s oh my god like dating no oh my god i feel bad for every woman i dated in my <laughs> 20s like what an idiot i was but that's <laughs> but see like i don't think there's anything wrong with that that's no. that's what i'm saying like yeah, that's you, why i'm like saying you it's said, just you learn. time right like i mean I, I think, yeah, I just think that that comes with time with guys, which is my point, which is why I'm saying if you just need to know yourself and what you're looking for. And I know myself well enough to be like, this is a late 20s, 30s situation. And yeah. you could also be very intimidating right now. <laughs> you know, like you're 20, right? Yeah. No, I'm 19. 19. So it's weird. It's I'm sure weird. I hate saying that most 19 year old wrong. kids are in college don't really have any success yet. You have mm -hmm. success no matter how old you are with what you've done so far. So I think anybody dating you would feel a little, a little intimidated, let alone a 19 year old kid, you know? So it's gotta be Perhaps. tough on that sense as well. Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. It's also like, 
I've also been in relationships and I think that this is an, again, another important quality. I've been in relationships where, um, I could tell whoever I was with wanted to like actively like dim my light. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't think that I'm unique in this experience. I've seen it with friends of mine and I've seen, you know, like it happens again, it's a security thing. Um, and I think it's just, there's something so amazing about if you're, you, if you can be with somebody that like really like loves you and like sees you for all that you are and you don't have to mask anything, you know, that's a yeah. big ask maybe, but I think there's something awesome when your partner can love about you what everybody loves about you and doesn't want to like actively suppress parts of you because yeah. they're threatened. Yeah. And That's, what you love about yourself. Yeah. 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 Um, have you, cause you seem like, obviously you do seem much older than you are in terms of your mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, have you like read a lot of books on this stuff and like, have you read attached because we just had a, a no. woman on last week. So have you heard of it? I think so. So it's basically, we had a, a girl on a uh, woman girl. I always go back and forth. Um, <laughs> she, um, Sabrina, she, uh, bases a lot of her stuff on, or foundationally, the book mm -hmm. called Attached, where it talks about the attachment styles, which is like anxious, avoidant, oh, yeah. or secure. Okay. And you keep bringing up secure, which yeah. is, you know, a recipe for success in relationships. So I was just wondering if you like study this stuff at all? Or you no, just, no, this is just my life. Okay. <laughs> this is just my life. I like, I got out of a relationship. Every time I get out of a relationship, I like assess what just happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I can at least take stuff away for going forward. And I feel like, I also feel like that's been a theme throughout all of my uh, relationships has been like a major security issue. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, what you said earlier, right? Like I think one of the key things to someone you're going to be with for a long time is mm -hmm. if you can be like deep friends and find mm -hmm. that like best friend, like with, with Hannah and I, I am so annoying. Like, Every second of every day, I'm so annoying, right? Mm -hmm. he is. But, mm -hmm. but he is. she just knows that and doesn't care. And she's like, I love you for you. And, yeah. you know, it's like a best friend. Like, you know, when you're with your best friends, you're always happy and goofy and annoying. And she's like, yeah, be annoying. Like, I know that's you. Where I don't have to suppress, like, okay, I have to act cool. I have to be, like, calm. Yeah. I could just be who I am. Yeah. So it's nice. Yeah. Um, I think it's time to do some Coke. Yeah. So why <gasps> Coke? So is your <laughs> is your ideal first date a can of Coke on the corner? Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, I was going to ask you, um, what is your ideal first date? My ideal That's first date is not the movies. I feel like I don't know where that like started to like go on movie dates like for your first date. I don't I don't know. But I feel like there's no worse idea for <laughs> you don't talk. Yeah. You either make out the entire That's time. Gonna, That's probably where it started. Or you don't talk. Um, my ideal first date is I just anything where you can really talk to the person um, and like get to know them. I think activities are fun. Maybe not like for the first one. I think just like a sit down, like lunch or dinner or even a coffee if you don't want to get like that serious that quickly. Um, some Somewhere where you could like hear what the other person is saying. <laughs> Again, like concerts, probably a no for mm -hmm. the first one. Um, Someplace with like good lighting, preferably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not picky. Like, I'm just like, okay, like, let's get to the point and like hang out and talk. Yeah. Do you um, have any, uh, any like first date rules? Because we have like, we've talked to some cheers, by the way. Cheers. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, Am I like to, not supposed no, to drink no, this? No, I don't know. So. Okay. See, okay. I'm like, the mic is actually right drink. here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Um, you can have mine too if you want. If you want to double fist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, we've we've talked to some like dating coaches that this one woman, uh, Amy Noble, has like a one hour hard out on a first date. Like that's what she tells her clients is like okay. one hour max and you're out. Oh, cool. Yeah. So there's stuff like do you have any sort of like or are there any topics that are off limits like conversation topics or do you pretty uh, open? I'm pretty open of a person. I wouldn't say that there's any like uh, especially now like now that I feel like I've like seen a lot and been through a lot. I kind of like want to get to the point. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Like, um, so I'm pretty open about everything. There's nothing that's off limits. I would not go to any homes like for a first date. Like I'm not a, okay, just like come over and we'll hang out type of person. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, that's just my opinion. No judgment. If I you think do. that's a fair, yeah, I was no judgment. If you do from like, the guy's yeah. point, he's probably not looking for anything real with you. If he's right. Doing that. Like, I just think, I just think it's a respect thing. And I think like somewhere in public for sure is preferable. Um, and I don't do anything like physically for States or no mini least, golf, no what? Or mini golf or paintball. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's put it that way. Okay. Um, no, but yeah, I would say like I don't like really ki- like kiss. I don't even kiss for states. Like that's a, always been a hard rule of mine. Um, cool. How do the guys usually me. take that? Like do they feel that you might not be into them? No. And 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 I I've like even said it before. Like I feel like I try to kind of avoid that moment. Mm -hmm. If, if I like feel it coming, then I'll like go in for a quick hug and like be horrible. (laughs) Um, but if I feel like I should say something to let them know that I did enjoy my time with them, I, I have in the past straight up just been like, by the way, like I, I have a rule, like I don't kiss first dates. I, I will just straight up say that. See, that's and they think super that's, mature. They think that's great. Yeah. They act, and, and, and like, if someone watching is thinking about doing that or like wants to do that or feels like they can, like I highly recommend it. Cause it, I've never had a bad experience about that. And if you do have a bad experience about that, then you know not to date that person. Yeah. Right do off the bat. Do you date often? No, because I'm always, I always have a boyfriend. That's yeah, and so do. I do, but I always have a boyfriend. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I've like, no, that's not true. I've like gone on dates before and like not dated them, I guess, but it's like almost a rarity. <laughs> okay. So is that because, well, other than having a boyfriend, is that because you're like pretty selective about who you would go on a date with? Kind of. I also have like anxiety around like hookup culture. Like I, I, personally and this is a personal thing I do not think there's anything wrong with it but for me I'm just not wired to be casual um and I like I can't like I can't like casually like do shit with people Mm -hmm. um if I do like I feel really bad about it afterwards and I feel like that's also something that's like not talked about enough maybe like I feel like hookup culture can be awesome and I think parts of it are, but then the other part is it's like, I've had a lot of friends who, who will, will do whatever they feel like doing and that's great, but then they feel like shit, you know what I mean? So I think it's just about knowing what everything means to you truly and just having your own standard and like knowing what you're okay with. And I just had great guidance growing up from my mom And from like people around me that were just like, know what it means to you. And like, if you don't think of stuff that casually, or you don't want to like give certain parts of yourself away in a certain way, then don't do it. And it was great advice for me. And I just know how I am again. So for me, it's just like, it's not really an option. So when I do feel like taking next steps with people, I'm like oftentimes like already in a relationship with them. And again, if that's a problem for somebody else nice. and it, and it's not even, and it's again, like I'm not judging if it is like if somebody is looking for certain stuff, then they're looking for certain stuff. Like nobody's right or wrong in this situation, but then I know, okay, like this we're not here for the same things. Mm -hmm. And then we just weed that one out and then it doesn't even have to go anywhere, you know? So, so when you, when you're about to get into a relationship with somebody, do you kind of know mentally that you're there with them before physically or physically before mentally? Um, hopefully mentally. (laughs) Wait, I don't know. I don't under, wait, say it again. Would you kind of want to know in your head, like, Oh, mentally I align, I align with this guy. And until mm-hmm. I get there mentally, that's when I'll then go physical. Or would you kind of, kind of, yeah. 
Yeah. You I wouldn't would be say like more sure. That. Then, I mean, you try for that. Yeah. And I've also like, I've, I've also been in situations where I've like been very physically attracted to someone and still not done it. You know what I mean? For the reasons I just said. Right. So like it can happen. I'm just like, if I'm physically attracted to you, I don't think that's going to go anywhere if I like don't have sex with you the first date. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, I just think that there's time for all of that. Like I, I would just regret, like I would regret rushing into anything without like knowing that this could potentially lead somewhere. I don't think that forever I'm going to be like, I am only going to have sex with you and do things with you if we're married. Like I'm not that way either, but I just, I'm just like not too casual about that stuff. It also just makes it more of an experience and more special for me and whoever I'm seeing. If you do know them really well. And that's what Alessandra said. We had a matchmaker on Yeah, and she said, you know, she doesn't like to give her clients advice unless they ask. Yeah. And she says when they ask, she thinks that if you have that baseline of a couple of dates where you actually have good yeah. rapport with them, then in the sex after that's great. If you have the sex right away, you can kind of miss on that, you know, nice baseline of, you know, a great core with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Like I also all like all physical aspects of things for me are just so much more enjoyable when I actually like you like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like for sure. it, it's just until then it just feels wasteful yeah. <laughs> in a way for me. So I think for everybody pretty much like you have to have some connection. I mean, there's definitely a spectrum, yeah. but some connection and the more you're into somebody, yeah. the, I think the better it is. And, and then Absolutely. there are, and there are people that, and like moments where, where people really do just want to hook up with somebody. And I think that's totally fine. Um, I just don't work that way usually. Yeah. So, so for me, it's like all about connection. So I would just rather spend time with you. And then like, of course, eventually it will lead to things. Love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you're kind of touching on a lot of stuff that have, that we have here, but, uh, I would say, I want to ask you this. Well, let me ask you this first. Okay. So we talked about this on a few episodes. <laughs> okay. If a guy p- is, do you let a guy pick you up on a first date? Would you? Oh, if you like knew him, yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah, I have. Uh, how I would think you if f- I like knew him like before though, or had right. like met him out, or like 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 mutuals, like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like not, not a total stranger. stranger. Yeah. I've never had that happen, but okay. So that's part <laughs> A of the question. Part B okay. is if he picked you up, mm-hmm. would you rather have him get out of the car and greet you or not? Like just get out and say hello, or just pull up, maybe give a little honk. I don't. I think every time I've been picked up, it's it's a not get out of the car situation. And that has never bothered me, nor did I think like he should get out of the car. I think it's more important almost like leaving than greeting, mm, if okay. that makes sense. But yeah, I don't. Now you have me thinking about it. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. I don't think it's a deal breaker if he doesn't get out of the car. It also depends on the pickup situation. Like, is he coming to your house or is it like kind of like a swing in like let's go? Yeah, I always say is too, he coming inside? Like whatever. Is it, it is. on a hill? That's dangerous. Is it on a hill? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How's the parking situation? Right, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. No, we just had a little, little uh, not a debate, but just offering up opinions about that. Yeah. As I said, on a first date, I would, I would most likely get out of the car. Um, and give I, like a little hug or something and just, you know, I think especially it's, if it's nighttime, I, I think, I think it's important to get out of the car if you're meeting them right then and there for the first time, actually, mm-hmm. that has just never happened to me before. Like usually I've met whoever I'm going out with before mm-hmm. in some sort of setting where I've like met them and said hi or shook hands or hug, whatever it is. Um, then not getting out and like meeting you doesn't seem that bad, but I guess if like you have met on an app or like whatever it is and you haven't had any prior experience and you're getting picked up by somebody, then yes, I would get out of the car. Yeah. And I well, think I wanted to ask you on that, it. right? So say you met somebody on an app mm-hmm. and knowing how our app works, mm-hmm. how comfortable would you feel? How, how much time would you need to talk to them before you actually met them for the first time straight off the app? And be honest, that, you don't wait, have to, you don't have that, to. How much, how long would so I So like with them? our app, right? Yeah. Once you connect for that date, 
Yeah. Our chat box only opens six hours before the date, right? So we give you like that little bit of time. Yeah. Would you feel comfortable with that or would you need more time to kind of vet them out? Comfortable enough to go on a date is the question yeah. with them. Um, six hours. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's like about the app. I think it's about the person you're talking to is everything. So it's just like how much you're going to utilize that time. And right. that's like an individual. And do you think that you could utilize that six hours to get a good feeling for, okay, like I'm actually going to go I think I could. This? Okay. I think I could. <laughs> it's a matter of like well, who I'm talking you're to. You're wise though. You're very wise. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not everyone can do that. I mean, I would hope that, and again, I think this is good about your model. I would hope that knowing you only have six hours, you'd be on your shit and mm -hmm. like you'd be on top of it. And you'd like be putting in the effort to like keep up a conversation. Yeah. In, and I in think the, in the chat, you know what I mean? Exactly. And I think that's what we're trying to do with the whole app is yeah. build that community of people doing exactly what you said and then following through with a date and like being that type of person that's confident and comfortable enough to go on that first date and really get to know somebody in person and like weed out all those people who are on there for the wrong reasons. Yeah. 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 I think it's good if you only have six hours because then, I mean, because then if somebody's like being lazy with it or like not responding or whatever, then, then again, it's kind of a first impression thing. Right. You're like, okay, well, what are we doing then? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's good. Nice. Um, what does love mean to you? Dog. I don't know. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Um, I have to stop saying dog. I don't know how I got in that habit. So I called you, so, my mom dog though. So other day. I know it's going to happen. My mom's now. like, what the fuck? I'm going to go home. I'm going to start saying dog. And Hannah, so this happened like three times in the past two weeks. I love She's her. like, I, I start picking up one liners that like younger people say. And what I oh I started saying clutch. I didn't think that clutch was a young person more. thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if so. it's a young person thing. Well, I, I just started think that saying clutch ended a couple and she, years ago. Oh, though. that's what I thought. Right. And she's like, who are you hanging out with? And I said, what are you talking about? She said, you're hanging out with some young, some young girls. You're saying clutch. And I'm like, clutch. what? No, I'm I've not. I haven't heard any young girls Thank say you. clutch lately. See, I, can, Hannah? I can vouch for you on Thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Unless they're talking about the bag. But now I'm going to start bag. saying dog. And she's going to be like, where'd you get dog from? And I'm going to say Eden. Say yeah. Eden. Yeah. <laughs> say Eden wouldn't stop saying it in the podcast. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Where's my tissue? Well, so I'm no. going to. Picked my nose up hard. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Since you you pulled the fake uh, allergy thing to get out of the question. Uh, oh my god! What, I didn't what even is, realize. What does love That's really mean funny. to you, dog? Um, <laughs> um, there's no right or wrong answer. Do you believe in love? Yeah. After love. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I do. Um, I think it goes back to what I was saying about like loving like every part of somebody. Like I I think like loving the good and the bad parts of somebody. And if you're willing to like write it out and like be in somebody's life, I think like that's like the most special part about it. Um, which like is not an answer. To no, that's a great, no, I think that's a great, great answer. Uh, really good answer. Well, is it? also because yeah. like, you know, we, uh, we've talked to people who say like, you know, you have to go through all seasons of life with somebody like in order to see like their true yeah. colors and like, see how they, you know, handle adversity and bad stuff. And <laughs> yeah. I think That's, that you like never know somebody like I think you never know somebody completely. I don't think I mean, you're like constantly changing. How could you? I don't think we know ourselves completely. 100% you know, you're, true. you're constantly changing and like going through new shit and wanting new things. And I also think that love means just like wanting someone around. Like whether it's a friend, whether it's like to maintain a friendship with somebody or like in any relationship, not just like an intimate relationship, but any, I think any relationship, it's, it's a really awesome like feeling to be wanted as a person and to be thought about and cared about. And like, I think that's kind of, I think of that was a great means. answer. Yeah. And I, I think what you said touched on a lot of things, right? Like if you want to be in love with somebody, you kind of want to grow with them and change with them, right? You don't want to change them or them to change you, but you want mm -hmm. them to help you grow. And I think you go from like that chemistry when you first meet somebody mm -hmm. to like the character that you build for each other and like the commitment and 
being yeah. those lifelong friends. I think that was a beautiful answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that would be my solid answer. Like love is just wanting you around, wanting yeah. someone around, wanting wanting somebody's thoughts about something. Wanting, like I think that is like everything. I think that says everything. Yeah. You know. Say less. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, I think that's why the importance of like love being a choice, right? And like you said, commitment, but because people do change and mm -hmm. love is a choice to love them. You know, obviously there's situations where you fall out, of, you don't want to love anybody anymore, you, mm -hmm. whatever. But like, I think the fact that you actively choose to love somebody every single day is super important, right? As they change and as they evolve. Um, so I think, I think it's as much a choice as it is based on a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the problem with the world now is we're so fast and there's like the next best option. So when something starts to go wrong, I think a lot of people run mm -hmm. instead of, you know, realizing that it's normal. Just you're in it with somebody. Life's long. You're going to go through ups and downs. See if you could work it out because that's love instead of just being like, you know what, we're fighting or I'm not happy this week. I'm out of here. You yeah. Know? Which is an easy way out. My a friend of mine said something so interesting about like this day and age of dating and why um, they have like a fear of commitment because we're like constantly like thrown like like images of like better stuff. Exactly. And they were explaining how no one like wants to commit anymore because they're scared that like something even better is going to walk down the street. Mm -hmm. Cause like, we're just like constantly fed shit all day long of like what we should be striving for and what we should be looking for. And like everyone's hot, <laughs> everyone's hotter than me ever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, it sounds so superficial, but I think that that affects a lot of people. Yeah, like I think does. people are just like scared to, yeah, like scared to commit to anybody and then and then end up hurting them because they're going to meet somebody even better. I'm you scared know? to commit to a Netflix movie or show because right. there's so many I know, I, I know you're joking, yeah. but I think it's true. No, I am. I'm not joking. <laughs> but <laughs> not no, joking. It's, it's so interesting. And it's like you can meet someone who's so amazing, right? Yeah. But in your head, you're like, you're like no, I can't. But she doesn't have green eyes. She's got everything else, but I want that with green eyes. And yeah. it's like. So you're going to miss up, up you're going to pass this beautiful opportunity, this amazing person, because you think that there's that with green eyes or, you know, some small so difference. So weird. It's true. I get, I get the point though. I can understand yeah. the point. I also I feel like know. anybody that has that strong of a belief on like a physical character, yeah, they're the doomed physical. to fail anyway. <laughs> they're doomed to fail it's like, like sooner than later. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like yeah. people, I think, I think a lot of times before you really look inward and, and do work on yourself and learn stuff, you you have the wrong idea of what you want in somebody else, right? It's most of the time for younger people, especially it's very physical, physically based and not looking at the actually important qualities to have a happy, healthy, successful, long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think as you grow and evolve, you really learn what it takes and what you really want in somebody. Right. And social media doesn't help either because <gasps> social media, you see everybody's best self. So if you see someone that you're mm -hmm. going to be interested in, say you go on a date with them, you figure out that they're who they really are, which is obviously not their best Instagram self. And you're like, oh, that's not you. I don't like you. I, th I like the Instagram version of you. So it's kind of like that next best thing of the perfect person. Yeah, it's yeah. so sad. It's so sad. Um, <laughs> he, he, he never drinks the drinks. Um, so funny. Why you, don't you ever drink the drinks? Uh, I don't What's really, the dealio? Well, oh, so yeah, why doesn't he? Have to answer this. Yes. It's a podcast thing. It's a po it's yeah. Uh, the, the million dollar question. Yeah, it's here. not. I mean, it's nothing. No, we want a real. I want you to give Eden a real answer. Yeah, it's nothing fancy. I just I don't drink. First of all, I don't drink soda. Okay. Second of all, I, I'm pretty health conscious, so like oh, okay. we have pe usually people who pick alcoholic drinks, which you'll get there eventually. Um, <laughs> but uh, I get there now, but I can't. We saw you at the bar twice. <laughs> How you got um, in? I don't you've know. You've seen me. Yeah, How you got in? I don't know. Things. She had the X's on her hands. That's why. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I just generally pretty healthy. And a lot of times people get alcoholic drinks. I'm like, I drink, but I don't like to drink on like a Tuesday at five o'clock. Yeah, it's a weird time. Yeah. So that that's, <laughs> I, I mean, it. it's not an exciting answer, but that's the answer. No, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gave up. Um, I used to be like more 
like, tell us more. But now I'm just like, all right, that's the answer I expect. Man, you're good. <laughs> and we were just talking about the jacked Koreans. Like, uh, they, they don't drink soda. And probably. you always get a free drink because he has yeah, a drink. Do you want them. This? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do you subscribe to love languages? Are you into that world? Oh, yeah. I think I, like, did that love language quiz everyone was doing whenever that happened. But you don't remember? Um, or do you remember? I do know I love gift giving Mm. like i'm a big gift giver i'm very sentimental about it um so it had something to do with that whatever the gift one is is there a gift yeah like yeah yeah. Uh, gift giving yes gift giving (laughs) okay great yeah i think great um yeah. yeah gift giving was like my number one i think and then probably like quality time what are they physical touch quality time acts of service acts of service words of affirmation yeah so acts of service, I guess, would be like big for me. And then so you like quality it all. time. Yeah, you like it all. I like it all. Yeah. yeah I like it all. There isn't one. Physical that touch I'm like. when appropriate. Physical <laughs> touch when appropriate. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I always ask this. I'm on the I have a little bit of a um, quest, maybe. I'm trying to normalize quest. something in the world. Okay. Um, let's say you meet somebody, you're in a relationship. Married or not, but you live together. Okay. Uh, would you ever be down to have separate bedrooms? With my with whoever I was with. Yeah. Separate your bedrooms with like partner a slash husband. Or, boyfriend, okay. Yeah. Um like in the home or we sleep in separate bedrooms every night? Like what's this? I don't know. Either one. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. You're getting, uh, it, it, you're getting a very split. The movement sure. is taking yeah, off. It, yeah, it is. I it mean, is. it's not a deal breaker. Okay. You can have sleepovers and take turns. <laughs> that makes it more exciting. Yeah, when it's a yeah whatever. Hey, Friday night, let's have a sleepover. Yeah. I like the idea of my own room. <laughs> yeah. I think that people are like super quick to like move really fast. And um, I like the idea of like separate spaces while still being together and like everyone's welcome. But you know, I think that that's really important. And again, like you said, I think it makes time that you do spend together more special. Yeah. It's more There's exciting. a quote of me coming out this week that is against you. Is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. You'll see it. Okay. That's right. It's not for everybody. And <laughs> to each their own. You know? <laughs> um, well, I think I have like four rapid fires here. Okay. Maybe it won't even be rapid fire. Sorry, though. that was like not rapid because I went off and word vomited. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't even supposed to be rapid. That oh. was supposed to be more of a Oh, that was just a question. Out. Yeah, that was just a question. Okay, great. For the movement. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, hypothetically, uh-huh. if you were 21, oh what would God. your favorite drink be? Actually, even if you weren't, it what could be non alcoholic. What would my favorite drink be? Yeah, what do you be? think it would be? Yeah. Moscow Mule. Okay. You it's answered my... that pretty oh, quickly. Sorry. Okay. Why is why Moscow, Moscow Mule? Moscow Mule would be my go to <laughs> drink. Um, because it's bad. It's, 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 you can't do it poorly. And you just like, like I've never had a bad in. Moscow mule. Like okay. it's, it's kind of like, it's a safe bet. Mm-hmm. So that would be my go-to drink. Okay. One day. Uh, One day. Favorite date spot. <laughs> favorite date spot. Um, I like, I like a dark intimate dinner like Pache. Okay. Pache is getting so much pull. Yeah, we got it. Wow. Yeah. Did you get a lot of Pache answers? I would say yeah. out of the last, I don't know, say overall we've asked 10 people. Yeah. I would say like at least half have said Pache. Yeah. And I I've think never someone been. needs to open up like a. Pache. Yeah, like something mm-hmm. similar to Pache. Or just any, yeah, like any Pache-esque think, situation. Do you think that's a good first date spot or is that is that too much for a first date? Uh, no, not for first you could, I think you could, I think you could do it. I just wouldn't because it's just really dark and loud and intimate. And it's so fun when you're like with your partner or whoever you're dating, even if it's casual, I think it's still a fun spot, but I would do something probably a little more relaxed. Mm-hmm. James, first. two dates, two first dates at Pache. Really? Both. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mine would be, well, prior to Hannah, all my first dates <laughs> yeah. were at... Zinc. Zinc, eh? Zinc. Oh, yeah. I felt like that was a good spot. Uh, Zinc is a great spot. Right? That I would do over Pache. 
for okay. the first date. I do Pache the second date. And you know what? If a guy asked me to go to Pache tomorrow for dinner as a first date, I'd still go. So I don't know <laughs> yeah. what I'm talking about. Same. <laughs> I mean, I would do it. It's I'm just that you don't have expectations. Th- I'm just like explaining. For... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I still would go. It's not a bad thing to go to Pache. No, the I don't first think date. it's a bad thing. Yeah. I wasn't implying that. I don't think Joe was either. <laughs> uh, favorite rom com? She's going to say something from like the 60s or something. Little no, woman. 90s, When Harry Met Sally. Yes, number one for me. Well, actually, 1A, 1B. You've got males. Uh, one, You've got one males. Harry Met Sally and Pache are Sally. getting yeah. a lot of press. Lot when of Harry press. Met Sally or My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Are you Greek at all? Or Notting Hill. Notting Hill is a good one. But I is that like a rom-com? Yeah, yeah, it is. I would say it's probably like 60-40 rom. Okay, yeah. Do you 60, think 500 35. Days of Summer is a rom-com? No. Nah, nah, well, parts actually, of it? Sorry, I'm just There's like a sequel? going back in my. Really? Wait, no, I thought you just said that. She said Love, love actually, actually. I said too. Love Actually. Oh. No, <laughs> I said Love Actually too. like I'm adding oh, on. Two okay. as in I'm adding on. Got you, got you, okay. I'm word vomiting uh, again. What, what would you say? So we watched, well, Hannah had never seen 500 Days of oh. Summer. Oh. Yeah. I think I w- that's a rom-com. We watched that for the first time the other day. I would say parts of it have the calm, but it's it's like a. Well, it's a little deep and dark. It's almost like a coming of age drama yeah. in a sense i would say i don't know but have you seen it Mm-mm. that's a good one it's a i it's like, like a, know what it is but I it's a big seen. like more of a breakup movie forgetting sarah, sarah marshall's oh 50 first eight forgetting sweet. sarah marshall that's my favorite awesome. forgetting sarah marshall nice. nice that's so good yeah <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one i uh, watch that like every day for a year probably that's one of the movies well, where if it's on it I'll watch it every day. I see Van Helsing. <laughs> I, I could go. I could do the whole fucking movie. Great song. Right yeah. now. Love it. Inside of you. <laughs> Please play that like as my outro. Like, we I got it. To play right, that. Got that. As long as YouTube doesn't flag it, we will. Uh, Something. Go to karaoke song. Not inside of you. Probably. Mm, uh, Whitney Houston. Or... Paramore. Well, that's very different. Yeah. Very different. Which I was Paramore? really or like, happy with the Whitney Houston. Or like Wicked or Rent Broadway. Okay. It's Oh, you it, did opera, right? Literally just in the opera? Oh yeah. my God, you did do your research. <laughs> so you can um, sing a little bit. No, I can't. But it, it, it's, it's very different things. Um, I was nine okay. when I did that. What was that like two, three years ago? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> And that like, it was the most amazing experience. I mean, I I tr- truly like hadn't and have not met any experience like that before. Uh, stumbled upon that by accident. Was not really a singer. I mean, I did like the singing lessons every child does on Tuesday nights. You know, mm. like I didn't take it seriously or anything. Um, and then I don't even know how I got that audition. But all I know is my mom got a call that they were auditioning. Uh, the production was Tosca. Uh, Placido Domingo was directing it. No, sorry, composing it. Um, and is composing the right word? He was the, comp- yeah, right? Conductor? Conducting it. Maestro? Maestro. Maestro. Thank you. Holy hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he's obviously a legend. Like, he's huge in that world. And um, I recorded, like, a shitty iPhone recording of me singing this, like, solo in in Italian. I had no idea what I was doing. The only thing I did was mimicked this, like, one snippet of some, like, weird YouTube video I found that, like, had the song. And that was it. Like, it, Can it's, you speak like, not Italian on or it. you just no. mimic, like... No, 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 no. I, like, just listened to the recording and was like, okay. And, like, did the worst thing you've ever seen. <laughs> and then sent it in. And then we got a call that they wanted me to go down and, uh, and meet them at the LA Opera downtown. And I went with my mom and I remember it was like me and like real, like much more deserving choir children, like, like that have been doing this forever and like professional people like (laughs) belonged there. Like I did not belong there. And then, uh, I went in and I like sang, I guess with, with, 
the guys that I ended up working with for like months because they had to teach me how to do it. But I guess Placido saw me and was like, yep, that's the one. It was just all about like the look and like, I guess the essence that my nine year old self had that that they like wanted for that character. You were has, nine going on 30 though. The probably. essence yeah. that you have. Yeah. Thank you. And Not. they were like, yeah, just this like little tiny twiggy blonde. And then <laughs> and then I got it. And then I had to like haul my ass down and like we trained for like six months. It was incredible. And then I did seven shows. Um, it was amazing. Like J Lo and P Diddy were like front row watching. Whoa, wow, cool. Damn, it was crazy. Really like cool. it was, it was huge. Like I could never do that now because my nine year old brain like didn't realize the gravity, the grand production that this was, and the fact that it was live is so insane to me because now I like can't imagine doing shit live because I, I was don't. gonna ask, do you, do you like it though? Would you would you ever go oh, back? I to- loved it. I love theater. Like. I grew up on theater, um, not doing it, but I have been to everything and I love it. And that was like the closest I've got to like any sort of like big theater experience. And I love, I had a blast. I would do it again. Cool. I love how you do your research. You know, that now we whipped out getting, getting answers like that are amazing. <laughs> I've yeah, got to prepare, was, you know? Wow. Yeah, it was really fun. It was um, really amazing. That's cool. I think we had one more rapid fire. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Did you, are you doing a fuck Mary Kill or not? On no, I couldn't think. Oh my God, fuck Mary Kill. That's so fun. Let's do it. Uh, people Give, or? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, who's uh, first celebrity crush? I have some strange ones. Not strange, some. Um, Harrison Ford. Mm. Uh, today, like, like modern my- day or? Indiana Jones, like it, like Hans, like Han and Han, Indiana, okay. and yeah, like okay. that was like probably like my first one. Um, I had Peter Pan. <laughs> Peter Pan was there. The cartoon or Robin Williams or, or? um no, what's the oh my god what what's his name in the two thousand three Peter Pan the live action one, you know the live action one with the little blonde boy what's his name I don't think I know it me neither. Oh this is embarrassing. I'm trying to think of a fuck Mary Kill while you guys talk. In I'll my look life. it up. <laughs> um, uh, Jim Carrey. Mm-mm. It's yeah. I I like can't say the rest of my answers, but th- those are some. Okay. <laughs> those are some. Jeremy Sumter. What do you got? Yes, yes, yes. Him. <gasps> him. <laughs> and he was also in that tornado movie. Twister. Twister. Was Wasn't it? he? He was in Friday Night Lights. Oh, J D. McCoy. In the storm. In the storm. Yeah, I used to watch that movie all the time. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, he's he was it as Peter Pan. What's his name? He was it? He was a. Uh, you could Jeremy Sumter. Join the conversation. <laughs> Join us. Join us. All right. So Jeremy Sumter is going to be in the fuck Mary Kill. Okay. So Jeremy Sumter. Okay. Are you just going to put those? You can't just put those people together. No, no, no. Okay, I'm go. trying to think of the, the fuck Mary Kill. Why? Well, yeah. Usually I pick something like. Uh, well, we can, you can think of some people. Okay, I'm thinking. I'll say um, movies, TV shows, or theater, or plays. Oh, it's we're not doing people. We will. We will next. Okay. We just don't have any in mind yet. Movies, TV shows, or plays? Yeah. Like to, to consume for the rest of your life. Meaning if you kill one, you can never watch it again. If you fuck, it's like, I don't know, once a week or special occasions. Or if you marry, you can watch them so every day. So theater has to stay because TV and movies are too similar. Oh, okay. So, I mean, like that medium has to stay. Yeah. So, I'd fuck theater and <laughs> <laughs> quote of the interview. <laughs> I, so, I'd fuck theater. Uh, uh, I'm on a TV show. This is bad. Um, I said to consume, though. So, you oh. can still work, but you just can't watch it or any other TV for that matter if you kill it. No, I'd I'd marry movies and and kill to kill TV. Nice. All right, I got, I got it. He's this got might it. be bad though, but I'm doing it on the spot. All right, so fuck Mary Kill. Okay. Pete Davidson. <laughs> I knew his ass was gonna be in there. Pete Davidson. I knew he was. Pete Davidson. Sure. Uh, Jason Segel. And oh who's God. the guy that we just said? Jeremy Sumter. Jeremy, Jeremy Sumter. Sumter. <laughs> fuck Mary Kill. I would kill Jeremy. Oh really? I would kill Jeremy. Uh, I, th- I thought he was like the maybe, guy. Maybe I hyped him up too much. Damn. Okay, that <laughs> you're was putting easy. him with them. Like, 
Um, well, then I feel like the answer is easy if you have this two of them. Is it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd marry I'd marry Jason yeah. and fuck Pete. Yeah, okay. that's what I would have thought. Okay. Right? I, <laughs> I mean, oh. I'm sorry, Jeremy, but... Yeah, you threw him to the curb real quick. <laughs> um, what else we got? So I got, I got Those are a so question. fun. I want more. Um, so a question I like to ask people, okay. the opposite of fuck, marry, kill is a little deeper. So Steve usually makes this a funny thing. I like to do it more of a serious thing. <laughs> Uh, okay. If you could, if you could have one law in the world that everybody would have to follow, oh my God. any crazy law, what would it be? Any crazy law? Anything that you want the whole world to follow? Well, you have. I feel like every answer to that that I'd come up with will be like so dumb. Why? I don't think so. His, I, his, you tell her your, your last two. One was the oh, no kids in the supermarket. No kids in the supermarket. <laughs> Like it's if really they're funny. if they're they have to be well behaved if they do anything online they get booted, um, mm -hmm. and then dedicated to go line so dedicated pre preparation to go line at Starbucks Chipotle like my pet peeve is when I'm in line and someone steps in to make it to go drink while I'm literally standing there waiting for my drink oh, or food yeah and it's like they have to make nine nine burritos to go and I'm like dude I'm right here I get make it make my shit you should make it a weekly thing Please. with a new one each week because those are good I I'll think of some more I just okay. haven't had any gripes I don't think. I get it. You know, this is like, this is like definitely a turn from, <laughs> from your answer, <laughs> but, um, which, which I was, what I was hoping for. <laughs> I think like to like not fucking euthanize dogs anymore in shelters. I don't mm. know why that came to mind first, but I just can't believe that still happens. See, and you thought it was going to be a bad answer. That was a good answer. Okay. Very good answer. There's just so much to say. Like <laughs> I'm like, oh god. Um, but yeah, that shit like makes me really what sick. What about humans? To think about what about them? No, you the euthanasia mean, like, with humans. No, Would you choose... no death penalty anymore. Well, like euthanasia, Definition? like pulling the plug on a human. What one? Would... Oh, no, I would not make that. Okay, illegal. so it's like universal dogs and humans. Let's keep oh. them alive as long as possible. No, no, no. I, I, I would, I would pull the plug on someone. Yeah, yeah, I think, I was gonna say, I think it's slightly, slightly different. Those are, things. yeah, I very think, different. <laughs> Someone is suffering. <laughs> I don't mean euthanize. I mean like in no, shelters. That was my. I mean that, like, that, that was like you can still put up. dogs down. Like I put a dog down. <laughs> like you don't well, need guess, them to like. Don't put sit humans down. Suffer. That's what I'm saying. Don't put humans down. Our dogs down. <laughs> but you know what? You just answer whatever, whatever you think I should answer. <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so, uh, anything, are you working on anything new? Like anything that's exciting to you right <laughs> no now? No dog. Okay. <laughs> no dog. No, I, uh, I'm filming a lot right now. I'm okay. filming a lot for the show right now, cool. which is really exciting. What's the, what's like the working season for filming? Uh, I, well, we like, we go all year. We just have breaks kind of sprinkled, sprinkled in throughout the year. Okay. So like right now I'm on a two week break. Nice. Oh, nice. Like that just started a couple of days ago and then we get. I think our next break is in April. We're like off all of July. It's kind of just like every couple months we get like a couple weeks off. Cool. And do you which like, is nice. like as an actress, do you like actor or actress? What do you prefer? I don't really care. Some people do. That's why I ask. But I, I, uh, I get it. As an actor. actor. Yes. Uh, actor. As an actor. As an actor. Uh, do you like going to like a lot to film every day or would you rather be like, or do you, would you prefer like going to locations like, you know, outside of like a studio lot? Um, I like the routine of going to the same place and I, and I, and we have a great studio. Like I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, it's right over here, right? Close. It's, it's prospect studios, um, uh, in Los Feliz, like uh, in the okay. residential part of Los Feliz. Oh, this is CBS, right? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Not. That's not it. Um, it's a smaller studio, like only us and Gray's film there. It's like most offices. Still on TV? Yeah. Holy shit. That's amazing. Yeah. That's got to be going on like what? I think they're like wrapping up. Oh, are they? Or something. I don't know for sure. I don't watch Grey's, but okay. I think I like saw some announcement. I don't I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it's like a smaller studio, which I like because I don't have to like carry all my shit 10 miles to wherever I'm going, the sound stage or anything. Yeah. Um, so I do like that, but the thought of filming on location is a lot of fun. 
like I would be down for anything. Cool. But we, but we like stick to the studio most of the time, unless we have like outside scenes, but then it's like the same outside. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I like it cause it's comfortable. I have like been there a while and it's like nothing to like worry about. I don't have to like worry about my environment or anything like that, but I think it would be exciting to shoot some somewhere else. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, you're signed through 2025. Did I see that correctly with the show? I think four, four. Okay. I think 2024. And how, how do those contracts usually, are they usually like short, a little bit shorter like that or does it just, the one I'm on right now is a three year. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Cool. It's my second three year I signed. But when I when I started on the show, I wasn't under contract. OK, like you can work there and not be under contract. There's lots of people that do that. Cool. What is uh, the best date you ever went on and the worst date? Do you have any any good stories? The mm, the best date I ever went on wasn't a first date. We had gone on a couple dates prior, but we did a road trip like mm-hmm. up the coast, like to the Big Sur area and like all of that. Whoops. And I had never seen any of those areas before. And I think there's something really, and neither had he. And I think there's something super exciting about like exploring new things, places, whatever it is with, with whoever you're going on a date with, because it's kind of unseen territory and nobody knows what to expect. (laughs) Um, And also like we were, in the car for so fucking long (laughs) that like you really do get to like bond and know somebody like on a road Mm. trip. I wouldn't recommend a road trip your first date. Maybe that (laughs) seems a little intense, but like if you want to kind of like break a barrier or like take, take a little next step with somebody, I would recommend that. Cause I think that like our relationship after that shifted a lot. So that was probably like, my best date experience. Okay. Favorite road trip song. You got one. Mm, Favorite road trip song. No, probably like just anything. Weezer. Mm -hmm. Probably. Mountain View life is a highway. Okay. Yeah. Life is a highway. That did come to mind as well. Okay. Um, I don't have any. Do you have a playlist? A road trip playlist? Not a, not specifically for road trips. I'm the worst with playlists. I have one playlist with everything. Um, me, me too. It's so light that's songs. Awesome. And I just, <laughs> and I just go with the flow. I don't okay. have like specific. I got a good one for you. I'll okay. give it to you guys. Okay, great. Yeah, it's called, uh, I, I don't even know what it's called, but it's great. Okay. Uh, all right. Worst Bad date. Bad date. I, this is going to sound like stupid. I really haven't had any like bad date experiences some have been better than others of course um no oh god i do kind of i had a great date with somebody and it like breaks my heart to say this god i hope there's no way he's watching it's fine um what's that supposed to mean (laughs) (laughs) leave that in leave that in (laughs) Um, um, we had a great date. I had liked him for so long. He was one of my first crushes, like since childhood. Um, he was a little older than me, so he like had no interest forever. Um, and like totally viewed me like little sister or whatever. And it like broke my heart for years. And then, um, and then I grew up and then it was different and he asked me out. And we had gone on a couple dates and I think this was like our like third or fourth date and last, um, we had a great date and we, he was such a bad kisser. I don't know how else to say it. Like I was infatuated with him guys. Like I like forever, like dream, dream happening, dream is happening. And he was such a bad kisser and like the makeout was so bad that was that the first kiss. Yeah. Was it that, that like literally like, like ruined, like it actually erased like all attraction. Like I love him still as a person. He's an awesome person, like truly. Um, but I could not see him the same way. And I was so, no, (laughs) 
I was asked at somebody once and I hope no. it helped about that. I didn't know. I debated like I did not how, know what to do. Here's a question. How long did you uh, go through with the kissing for? And so you're like, I've I had enough. <laughs> you I don't, having a coffee I'm going to have a fucking panic attack. <laughs> um, I don't. <laughs> I don't even really know. I think I like kind of zoned. I I probably gave it a minute to like see if it was like because you was, know stuff can happen an like if it was like he was just fucking nervous or like we yeah. couldn't get the flow like i don't know but i just was so sad about it actually and it still makes me sad because it was so unfortunate because i like liked this guy so much and i never thought like that that would really matter that much and I don't think it has to matter that much, but just that situation was like the first situation where I had had an, a bad experience in that regard. And I was like, oh shit, this like really affected the way I saw him. And mm -hmm. I really wish it didn't. Can't control um, it. Yeah. But I, again, like I really couldn't control it. And then after that, it was just like major ick. How, major okay, so ick. It's like that game, seven minutes in hell, right? That's what it's called. <laughs> Uh, how did you actually, since you weren't honest specifically, how did you get out of that situation? I, I think, I think timing really helped. Cause I think he was, he was going away. Um, it was a couple of, it was, yeah, he was a couple, he was going to college. Mm. He was going to college and that kind of, I think gave me an out. I forget this was years ago. I forget specifically like what I said, but Maybe he's like a Casanova now. Like he got I his, fucking hope he got so. His college, he got he's his so history. he's beautiful. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I'm he. He will be fine. I also thought like, I also thought, oh god, like maybe he is unskilled because he's so fucking beautiful that like he never had to like, d like maybe nobody has ever told him mm. because he he's awesome and that's like fair. no one. I think that's true. It must be because I know he was kissing. Would bitches. you give him another chance for a kiss? I don't hey, know. bring him out, Joel. Bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd fucking die. I'd fucking seriously, die. Seriously, bring him out. I'd um, fucking die. Uh, yeah. So I think. Yeah, I think there's that. Um, and he's got a bunch of yes men around him that they're all like, yeah, the best. I know. And I was, I, you could have been the one to change I his life. Cha I could have changed it, yeah. but I did not have it in me. I was like, I can't do, I can't do it. I was so scared of hurting his feelings. I would have done. It's always, I mean, else. it is always the debate. Like if you're not into somebody, how did you yeah. go about it? Oh, uh, so this was pre Hannah. Um, she was like 21 mm -hmm. and I was 31 or mm -hmm. 30. Um, and like, you know, we were just fooling around making out and mm -hmm. I could tell that she was trying. So in a nice way, cause we had been seeing each other for a couple of weeks. I was just like, Hey, like just relax. When, when we kiss, just relax. Like, you know, don't, don't. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I, I, I did just it relax. in a way of like, like, I don't know, like enjoy it. Just like, yeah. don't think about it. And she did. And she learned, well, I didn't teach her, but she like listened, I guess. And after we stopped hooking up, she ended up being a Ryan Seacrest girlfriend. So I think that me being honest <laughs> with her, it, it helped. Like dating Ryan? Like she dated Ryan Seacrest for a while. Oh, oh But cool. maybe because I was honest and she was like, oh, let me think about this. That's awesome. Yeah. See, dreams so I'm happy I did do it. come true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully somebody else did what I could not Your for him. Work, yeah. Um, I'm sure he'll be fine though. Okay. I'm sure he'll be fine. But yeah, that's like the worst <laughs> thing, okay. I guess. Cool. Everybody's been lovely. Everybody. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's been lovely. <laughs> uh, well, we're having a great time, but it's probably getting to that time. Um, where can people find you? Online? Oh, I'm so bad at this. Everything meshes together. Um, but I think I'm, this sounds so You're an old soul, so you probably have Facebook, right? I, I do, but like, I'm like hacked or something okay. like you can only see my Facebook in like Indonesia. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. It's so fucking weird. Up, I've been trying to like, I've been in contact with Facebook for 10 years. I see him like trying to find it. Right now. <laughs> Are you? I don't know. I'm blind. Um, you, I, I think like my Twitter is like real Eden McCoy. Mm. Um, real. Cause there's so many others. Um, <laughs> And then my Instagram's just my name. Everything is pretty much just my name. And I think everything is like 
verified. Okay. So you can just look up my name, cool. I think. All right. Well, Eden, this has been awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank Appreciate you for you. having Thanks, me. Eden, <laughs>